Our next inventor is 38 year old Gunjan from Goa who wants to make everyone's least favorite subject in school simpler. Bhai mujhe to abhi bhi uske nightmares aate hain. 2x plus 3x plus 5x humse na ho pai. Hi. Hello Gunjan. Hello. And uh, where are you from? I'm originally from Bhuvaneshwar. Okay. But I have lived in many different cities of India during the course Such so as? far. I've lived in uh, Calcutta, Bokaro, Delhi, Ahmedabad, wow. uh, Bombay, and now in Goa for the last year. Which was your wow. favorite? Uh, so far, Goa is my favorite. Nice. That's where I'm right of now. Of course. Yeah, you know. <laughs> how did you land up in Goa? Like, how did this happen? Why doesn't it happen to my life? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm a graphic designer. I work from home, so ah. my lap, my office is wherever my laptop is. Great. So tell us about your ideas, your invention, your. All right. Type. So before I jump into the idea itself, I'd like to share a quick bit of experience uh, that I've had. So I do like teaching as well, and while I was in Bombay, I have been involved in going to some schools, uh, typically schools where children from underprivileged families come to study. Uh, of course, one notices a lot of issues in those areas, but certain specific ones that caught my attention were one that these kids have no interface to technology today, and by the time this kid is gonna. Get a look at his first laptop or his first piece of advanced technology. He's going to be 24, and probably that's the time when he's trying to get his first job, right? And by then, the world has already moved far ahead of the technology that you are looking at. So it's you're constantly playing a catch-up game. You will mm. never be ahead of the crowd. Could I possibly change that? So one simple thought was, okay, uh, fine. These schools cannot invest in buying laptops and smartphones for every single kid. Can I create a shareable device, a device which can be shared by people hmm. and give them the digital experience? How about if I can create a device that can turn any available surface, let's say your teacher's table or your courtyard, into a smart surface? What's a smart surface essentially? A surface that you can give input from and receive output through. So the first thing that I wanted to work on was uh, to create a module to teach geometry and trigonometry to kids. Why I picked these two specifically is because geometry and trigonometry lend themselves to visual representations very easily. So that helps me cross the language barrier much more easily. So that is the reason I wanted to start with mathematics, and this is the device that I've thought of. How does it work? You're saying it's basically like augmented reality, where somebody has to wear something and then interact with geometric shapes, and then in, how does it? What's the functionality? Okay. So it is augmented reality. Yes. Uh, actually, mixed reality would be a more apt term okay. for this. Okay. Uh, I wanted to avoid any sort of wearables. Okay. I do not want the kids to have to interact with the device, device. itself. Okay. What I want them to interact with is the technology and the experience behind it. Okay. So the device, like I said, imagine a table lamp. Okay. Right. So you have a table lamp kept like this on a surface. Got it. Now you have a projector projecting, let's say, a one feet, one Got foot it. by one foot area. Now this one foot by one foot area is a smart surface. Along with this, I provide some control chips. Control okay. chips would be like, let's say, carom dots. Okay. So you have these black carom dots. You Got place it. three of those dots there. The camera can pick up the position of the three and calculate the relative space within the space that the projector has okay. created. Okay. And thus, now I know the centers of each of these. Mm -hmm. So what my projector does is it projects a triangle connecting the centers of all these three dots. Okay. Okay. Now that I have the triangle, I have all the dimensions of the triangle. I can calculate the perimeter, the area. I can calculate all the angles. So. Sorry. So the the child would would the student would be able to move these markers. Yes. And then the projector would essentially highlight the space between it and representing the surface area of that particular object. Correct. So it Got could it. be a triangle. It could be a quadrilateral. It Got could it. be a circle. And not just area. I could okay. be talking about any mathematical properties of the shape that has thus been generated. Gunjan, can I? Ha I have a technical problem. Yes. Okay? okay. I have not understood anything you said. I'm really sorry. Like oh how this God. works. What it is? Can you explain it to me in a much simpler way? Also, like for an audience that's watching, what have you made and what does it do? Like very simple layman's language. I can try and explain if you want. If 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 then that go works, because I'll be because I will be so explaining then it Basin, as a layman. So then, go there and go ah. there and explain. I'll be explaining it as layman. If yeah. you're if you're okay with that, Could I'm very happy with that. Yes, please. And you have to give me marks. Yeah. Okay. But since you're channeling Gunjan, right. okay. So so go this is what it. you have. You have a screen at the top. Okay. Okay. Essentially, a projector. So okay. imagine the projector is all the grey parts. Yeah. And right. and the all these are... right. And the markers are these, these circles. Circles, the circles in the middle. Circles, let's say. Okay. Now imagine the 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 projector has read now has read this okay. and recognizes it, okay. and it starts drawing lines between each one of them. Okay. Connecting them. 
now you have the ability to move these these rounds to different parts of this white space and it's dynamic so as you move it the, the connecting lines update. the shapes are changing along right. with that it will also tell you what degrees it's changing to and what the surface area sir, is and but what am i going to use this for for interactive <laughs> learning so this was part of my feedback i struggled with mathematics as a kid if this was introduced to me as a child i think that comprehension of shapes angles degrees and everything else that comes with it uh, i would be able to absorb much faster sir mai jaun sir sir yes sir thank you and full thanks to you yeah. for the explanation got, yeah. it was perfect right. okay, yes awesome. absolutely <laughs> what would something like this cost uh, because i'm i'm seeing multiple moving parts here i'm seeing the the hardware component the accessories and software if it's already you know built into it or if it has to be bought separately as a license i do not know what cost that will be but a target is to keep it within 10 to 12000 a unit as technology is you know developing so rapidly it almost feels like it's quite too simple what it does is quite simple compared to what like a very basic smartphone for the same price could do multiple more things in it i really really like your idea if this were to move to uh, the lab stage um i would for one i think would be very happy Thank you so much to say that. Thank you very yeah. much. How have you been? Good man. The pitch was really cool. Nice. Tell me about your project now. So it's basically a table lamp sort of a device, right? We have this stand happening here, a base. In this base, I'd like to have now a set of batteries maybe. And the processor, etc., make the base heavy so that it makes sure that the stand is upright. Wait a second, that's the base, and this is the top, right? This is the top. Okay. Right. And here, I want to have a camera and a projector. So, camera reading the surface here, and here we'll have the markers that we have designed, right? And uh, I have an off-the-shelf projector. For now, I'm thinking I'll just modify the stand to hold the off-market camera and projector as they are. And the last thing that you want to do is possibly also look at a humanizing factor to it. Think about how you can communicate a language which is a little bit more playful. Right, make it look like more like a toy than like a scary device. Yeah, or something that kids would like to interact with, want to go and touch and feel, and you know, like want to have a conversation with it, want to feel it, that kind of stuff. That's fair input. So give it a bit of a character. Let's get started with this. Let's start thinking, and then we'll get back, go into more details. I think. Yeah. All right. Okay. Awesome. So right now I have started working on my project and there are actually many many layers to it. Uh, there is a front end or the user interface that I need to build for the kids to be able to understand what they're seeing on the device. I also need to be working on the back end, which is the actual code which is going to be running it. But most importantly, what I'm working on right now is figuring out the hardware. So I design and quickly put together the core structure of the product. I chose MDF as the prototyping material because it's quite easy to cut and manipulate and stick together. I basically needed a vertical stand to hold the whole device together and a horizontal arm which would really contain all the technology making it work. So once I put together the core structure, I had to figure out the exact height that it needed to be, how far the projector needed to be from the upright arm, where the camera needed to be focused. So there was a lot of measuring and considering where things would go in relation to each other for the device to function properly. In order to fit all the components into the arm that I was creating for it, I had to create some sort of mechanism for the camera to be held in, wherein it could be moved front and back, and also its angle could be adjusted so that I could get it to focus exactly where the projector was focusing. I tried to find a way to dismantle the projector and reassemble it inside my device itself. but after spending a couple of days trying to deconstruct the projector and trying to figure out how to reconstruct it within my device i kind of gave up on the idea and just went with attaching the projector separately while i was putting together all this hardware i also needed to find a way to get the user to interact with the device 
I came up with a set of screens for the device which was using these circular discs, right? That's where the UI came into play. So I started designing that as well. So now that I had the device together, I needed to test out the program itself, which is basically what the device is supposed to do. Finally, when I was assured of all the measurements, all the dimensions, I went for solid teak wood to make the vertical stand on which the whole thing was to be assembled. For the final arm on top of the teak wood stand, I decided to use 3mm clear acrylic as my material. So I can laser cut the acrylic sheet into its various components. Now assembling the acrylic sheets was really, really tricky because they had to be stuck at very, very precise positions and angles using chloroform. It literally melts and welds acrylic into place, basically. So it was a bit of a tricky process. We have run into a little bit of Murphy situation. When we started creating the prototype of the code was basically a code that could identify one very specific design. However, we realized having such a specific symbol would limit the usage scenarios of the device. So we wanted to change that shape and we wanted to simplify the dots so that it could be identified by the device nonetheless. I'm a bit scared about not being completely ready for the consumer test in time. Um, but uh, as they are, it's a problem to be solved. So I'm gonna solve it one way or the other, that's for sure. pretty close to where I see it going finally when it's a market ready product. And it's probably going to be the first time somebody is going to be touching and feeling your device. It's new technology, it's in a format that you have never seen before, that's bound to be exciting. So on one hand I'm quite confident that it will generate some waves. One's got to study the, the tropes and crests of these to figure out how to take this wave forward and make it more powerful. Nice. I wish you the best. Thank you man. Break a leg. <laughs> So my invention is about converting maths from a subject into an experience that you can really get hands on with. And the idea with the current device is to be able to teach you a couple of things about triangles. Uh, it's simple to operate. Uh, there are these four dots that have been provided, which are used to interact with the device. The rest the device does on its own. All you have to do is place the dots at positions which are marked by the device and then let the journey take you through itself. Yeah, behind this innovation, I felt that you know that was something very different and very great. Mathbus, on the other hand, is I think also a great invention when it comes to uh, getting kids enthused about maths. You know, I, I think all of us have been in classrooms and we've seen how boring it can be. You know, with a chalk and a board, it's not enough. So, uh, how do you enthuse kids? I think Mathbus is a great solution for that. So we'll need to dim the lights a little bit for okay. the projection to show up. <laughs> okay. So, but how it works is you interact with the device using these dots. Okay. And it's fairly simple. You place one there, the device uh -huh. should detect it, move uh -huh. to the next screen. So, we bring in one more. Okay. Uh -huh. It will detect two dots and project oh. the connecting oh. line between the two. Right. Uh, two dots make a line, add another. So, we add another. And it makes a triangle? Yeah. Wow. It does. Nice. That's amazing. Wow. And nice. what are we seeing on the side? So, one is for sides and the other is angles. So, if I pick the first one, it gives you the theorem that sum of any two sides of a triangle is always greater than the third. It's showing you the measurement of all three sides. I really like this movement between analog and kind of something else happening, magical. It's kind of like magical for me. Oh. Awesome. Right. Okay, well, you got well, totally well, sucked well, into well. your game. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. We've been playing here all day. <laughs> but it is really, really impressive to see where you came the concept and the Inventor Challenge. And you have done exactly what the lab phase was for.